I'm your host with the most local 23. You're joining me for Open Heart Chapter 2. Code Blue. The heart man rate monitor whines a long, flat tone. Code Blue! Come on, Annie, stay with me. You frantically perform CPR as you wait for the code team to arrive. Casey? You look up to see Jackie in the doorway. Jackie, where's the code team? Room 502 called a code blue just before you. Just keep up the CPR. They'll get to you when they can. That could be too late. Help me, Jackie. I'm losing her. And I don't know what's wrong. Jackie snaps on her gloves, moving quickly to Annie's side. What were her symptoms? She was admitted for... No, it wasn't headaches and nausea. Hemothorax. What are you talking about? That was the woman you helped Ramsey with. Oh, mother. Did she have headaches? Becky grabs Annie's chart from the foot of her bed. God, I suck. This says she came in with headaches and nausea. Well, I was thinking skin rash too, but shh. That's right. It started during her vacation to Indonesia. Aurora and I did a blood workup and gave her, uh, Cephpodoximin. Jackie pulls back Annie's gown, revealing... Look, she's breaking out in hives. She's in anaphylactic shock. Must be allergic to the antibiotics you gave her. Allergic. How was I supposed to know? You couldn't have. But does that really matter right now? This girl needs you. We'll have to get our heart started ourselves. Get the defibrillator set. We'll start her at 300 volts. Jackie takes your place in performing CPR while you pull in the defibrillator. Defibrillator cart. Try saying that three times fast. Trying to steady your breathing, you quickly scan the instructions printed on the side of the device. Bear the patient's chest, apply the paddles to the right side beneath the collarbone, and to the left side beneath the armpit. Okay, I've got this. Open Annie's gown, because you don't want it to catch fire. You pull Annie's gown aside. Good start, now grab the paddles. You take the paddles and apply gel to the other sides, Jackie. Pause the CPR. Okay, I have to place the first paddle on Annie's right side under the collarbone, and the second paddle on her left side. Place the paddle beneath Annie's left arm pin. That's right, now set the charge on it. Set the charge to 300. Charging! Okay, it's charged, do it. Clear! Zzz. Annie's body spasms as the paddles discharge. You set them aside and return to compressions on Annie's chest. You can do this, Annie. I know you can. Come on. Come on back to us. Monitor beeps once, twice. Annie's heartbeat returns, accelerated by the constant. Her butt constant. Yes. You're so lucky. Seriously, you give her an epinephrine injection and innovate. I'll maintain compressions. Jackie nods, moving quickly to retrieve the epinephrine. You continue your compressions. What in the hell is going on here, rookie? You look up from Annie to find a Dr. Ramsey glaring from the doorway. Dr. Ramsey, she was allergic to the antibiotics I prescribed. Well, at least you're taking responsibility. Sometimes patients don't know their own allergies. That's why you always have to be cautious. Jackie injects the epinephrine pin in Annie's thigh. Still unconscious, Annie takes a stuttering gasp of air. And now we innovate. Excellent work, Dr. Varma. You were assigned to the case? No, I was passing and heard Dr. Valentine calling a code blue. The patient's very lucky you were here. I'm not confident Dr. Valentine could have handled this alone. Jackie bites her lip and glances at you, weighing her options. Thank you. Just doing my job, Dr. Ramsey. Hey, I saved the patient too. Dr. Varma really bailed me out. 
Thank you, Dr. Varma. Jackie tries to read you, knowing she took just took the full credit for the save. Anytime. Dr. Varma, you should return to your own patients. Yes, Doctor. She leaves with a backward glance at you. And you, you need to have a long, hard think about whether or not you're ready to be here. It doesn't matter that it's your first day, or that you're still learning. Whether this girl lives or dies is on you. I know, Dr. Ramsey. You still have no idea what's wrong with her, and your first effort nearly killed her. This is the real world, no room for a mis- Hi, Dr. Ramsey! Sorry to interrupt. For the love of God, what now? One of the nurses told me, then one of the other interns told them, that one of the doctors said... Skip to the point. Dr. Tusanon needs to see you urgently. He then pinches the bridge of his nose, mumbling something about interns under his breath. Remember what I said, rookie. Next time I see you, you'd better have solved this case. The petite intern jumps aside as Ethan leaves. You sigh in relief and step out into the hall with the intern. Thank God for Dr. Toussaint. Yeah, too bad he doesn't actually need to see Dr. Ramsey. Huh? I made it up. I could hear Ramsey chewing yell halfway down the hall. I figured you might need a save. You lied to Dr. Ramsey for me? That was so sweet. You're my hero right now. She waves her compliment away with a cheeky grin. Don't mention it. I'm Sienna, by the way. Or Dr. Trin. Whichever floats your boat. Casey Valentine. Thanks again. We interns gotta stick together, right? This whole program is designed to push us to our limits. Uh, we won't get through this unless we have each other's backs. Totally. Only the strong survive, though. <laughs> okay. Totally. Safety in numbers. You have no idea how nice it is to hear someone say that. I've already met a couple of sharks today. Uh, sharks are the worst. What's a fish that kicks butt in a team? Dolphins. Technically, a mammal. Whatever. I'm a doctor, not a marine biologist. So, let's be dolphins. So long as I don't have to make dolphin noises. Oh, by the way, I hear all the doctors hang out at this bar after work. Donahue's? I think just down the street. Apparently it's like the place to go and decompress after a long shift. Wanna come with? Oh, sure. If I survive my first shift. Assuming you live through the next few hours, I'll meet you at the atrium after we clock out. Return to Annie's bedside and pack up the defibrillator cart. My god, say that word three times fast. Your smile fades as you take in Annie's still unconscious body. I'll figure out what's wrong with you, Annie. I promise. As you tend to your other patients, Annie's face comes back to you over and over. So do Ethan's words. You need to have a long, hard think about whether or not you're ready to be here. Am I really cut out for this? Feeling like you're on the verge of a breakdown, you duck into a dark supply closet so nobody can see you while you try to pull yourself together. And suddenly, the door swings open and somebody steps in. Oh, we're just picking someone? Um, I feel like Bryce. I feel like I'm interrupting something. Get in or get out, Bryce. Just quit holding the door open. Bryce squeezes inside with you and closes the door behind him. Hey, hey, hey. What's wrong? My first patient almost died. It was my fault. Maybe. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. I've dreamed of doing it my entire life, but that doesn't mean I'm ready. Wow. You managed four years of med school, but four hours here, and you're surrendering? Didn't take you for a quitter. You just met me. True, but if every hospital employee who ever hid in a supply closet quit, there'd be nobody here but patients. No offense, but what do you know about him? Well, let's just say this isn't the first supply closet I found a stressed out doctor in a day. Well, you don't seem overwhelmed, so 
what do I do? How do I handle it all? You've got two options. One, breathe through life with an unshakable self-reassurance like me. Or two, ride it out. Ride it out? It's not great advice. The Not as great advice as you think it is. Of course you're overwhelmed. You're a doctor. It's one of the toughest jobs there is. And you're on your first day. If you don't give yourself a chance to make mistakes, to get better, nobody else will. You hang your head for a moment, thinking about Bryce's words. Okay, I'll try. Good, because I'd hate to lose you so quick. Is there anything else I can, uh, I can get you? I could use a hug? Alright, come here. Oh, I forgot. Hugs are taboo now. <laughs> if you watch my most recent video, you'll know why. Bryce wraps his strong arms around you, pulling you close. You press your cheek against his shoulder and close your eyes, feeling peaceful and safe. This is nice. You're a pretty good hugger. One of my many talents. You look up at him and your face is closed. Hey, wait a second. Was this just a ploy of yours to get me alone in here? Play it off or don't laugh at him. Keep dreaming, scalpel jockey. <laughs> oh, maybe I will. He opens the door to leave. Thanks, Bryce. I needed that. You've got this, okay? He winks at you and leaves. The door swings slowly shut behind him. You sigh deeply, leaning against the supply shelves to collect yourself. I won't let this job beat me just yet. I hope not. Later, you're walking down the hall with yet another blood sample for Manny to run yet another test. Your mind races with ideas. Wolf? Parkinson's? White syndrome? No. She would have known about it before now. You keep walking, rattling off the possibilities to yourself. Could it be aortic stenuous? But she doesn't have the risk factors. Until you look up and realize you have no idea where you are. Wait, wasn't I just... Where am I? Bought an intern in a wheelchair, heading up the corridor towards you. You recognize him from orientation. Hey, it's Harry Potter MD. You know, living under a staircase and all. You can call me Casey, but I'll also answer to the Chosen One. Oh, I'm Elijah Green. Nice to officially meet you. You know where you're heading with that sample? I'm completely and utterly lost. Oh, thank God. I thought I was the only one. I swear this hospital doesn't look this huge from the outside. I'm gonna be honest, this isn't even my first time getting lost today. How does everyone else seem to already know where to go? And what to do? I knew this would be hard, but nobody told me everything was gonna be this hard. If they did, we'd all run for the hills and become lawyers instead. A hunched elderly patient shuffles towards you, clinging to a wheeled ivy stand. Say, are you... are you too lost? I, I can show you to the main hall. Thanks. As long as it's not too much trouble for you, ma'am. No trouble. Dr. Taylor makes me take 12 laps to the floor every day so I don't go stir-crazy. You and Elijah keep pace with the woman as she shuffles along. Every doctor and nurse you pass greets her warmly. Evening, Miss Martinez. How was tonight's Jeopardy? The young man who won just seemed so nice, but he'd be nice. But if I'd be playing, I would have kicked his behind. How do you know your way around all here so well? It is a bit of a maze, isn't it? But after all these years, I, I know it like the back of my hand. Here you go. This elevator can get you on your way. Thank you so much, Miss M. You're a lifesaver. Now, you all have to pay it forward, young doctors. And don't worry, you'll get acclimated. There are some things you can't rush. As you get in, she shuffles away, her bare butt showing at the back of her hospital gown. Uh, Miss Martinez, your butt is showing. My word! Were you looking? I I'm sorry, I just... I'm teasing you, dear. I like the breeze. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> the elevator door slide shut. Elijah burst out laughing. You sh could should have seen your face, Casey. Oh, shut up. As the elevator whisked you down, the old woman's words keep ringing in your head. It's a maze. Some things you can't rush. Oh my god. I know what's wrong with Annie. Who's Ann? Jam the button for the fifth floor just in time, and the elevator stops to let you out. Gotta go. The doors slide open, and you take off running. Soon you're back in room 532, chatting with an awake and alert Annie as Ethan walks in. I'm told you wanted to see me. Annie is going to be okay. That's good news. I imagine this wasn't a random miracle. No, smart... You mother... Ethan folds his arms and leans against the door frame. So, I'm waiting to hear whatever brilliant insight you arrived on. I want to know, too. It was never the bacteria, but it was something that happened on her trip to Indonesia. And he told me you went for your scuba lesson license. You didn't say you got it. Because I didn't get it. You also told me that you were prone to panic attacks when you get stressed out. Annie, did you have a panic attack while you were diving? I always wanted to go scuba diving, but once I got down there, I just totally freaked out. Ah, she came up too fast. And you resurfaced too quickly. You hand Annie's chart to Ethan. The result? Decompression sickness and libo-renthesis. Or labyrinthesis, excuse me. Annie, that's an inflammation of your inner ear, which caused your vertigo and nausea. Oh! And what treatment do you recommend, Dr. Valentine? The symptoms can be erased with air ease with antihistamines, but the condition itself can only be treated with time. Her body has to acclimate to the oxygen. How much time? You can't rush it, but within a few weeks, you'll feel like yourself again. Thank you so much, Dr. Valentine. You follow Ethan out into the hall, feeling confident. So, I'll fill out a prescription for some extra strength and histamines, and don't bother. I already have. And you a printed out prescription order for what you were about to request. You knew? When were you going to tell me? Ethan checks his watch. I plan to give you another 45 minutes. I pulled up Annie's chart to diagnose it myself in the likely event you blew it. But I wanted to give you the chance to, to write the ship first. Hmm. Thanks for giving me the chance. Hmm. I would have expected you to be angry. No, I appreciate your help. I'm never going to learn if someone's always holding my hand. My thoughts, exactly. But you showed potential. Not to mention, maybe the most important trait a doctor can have. What's that? You listen. You took the time to get to know your patient, their story, their hopes, their fears. Sometimes those are the key to saving their life. There's an Aurora walks up looking flustered. She stops when she sees you and Ethan and looks through the window to a happy, smiling Annie. What the hell? You went and presented without me? Oh crap, I totally forgot that I was working with Aurora on the case. Annie was your patient as well, Dr. Emery. What the hell have you been doing while Dr. Valentine was making a diagnosis? I'm trying not to think about earlier when that girl took full credit and threw me under the bus. So, um... Mm, apologize to her. Sorry, Dr. Emery. I should have kept you updated on the development. Aurora glares coldly, but recognizes you're giving her an out. 
It's okay, I wasn't here. This was your win. Dr. Valentine, hospitals run on communication. Keep each other apprised. Yes, Dr. Ramsey. And Dr. Emery? Patient assignments are not optional. He walks off, leaving you and Aurora in an awkward silence. So, what have you been doing all day? What do you care? You clearly didn't need my help. No, I guess I didn't. Why is she so scummy? I don't understand. After your shift, you find Sienna waiting for you in the atrium. Hey, you survived! Ready to hit that bar? Totally. You look great, by the way. Did you bring something to wear after work? Everybody's gonna be at Donahue's. I heard even Dr. Ramsey's regular watering hole. Could you hurry it up a little? I'm thirsty. Relax. The first round's on me. Ooh! Yeesh. Gee, golly willikers. Um, after hours. It's a nice, nice outfit. It's a bit much, but, I mean, it's me, so. Um, I don't think I would ever, as a, as a, as a I don't know, as a guy, ever feel that comfortable, especially around someone you just met, to be that revealing. I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm a guy who <laughs> sleeps with a shirt on. Anyway. I'll stay in this. This is all I brought with me. Hey, less laundry to drag the laundromat when it's snowing. Now let's go. I hear Vodka Raspberry calling my name. And what's that? It has friends. Ah, but um, shh. Donna Hughes is dingy, dim, and completely packed. Sierra charges confidently through the groups of doctors and nurses leads you to the where Jackie, Landry, and Elijah have commandeered a booth. Oh, come on. There's still 67 seconds left in happy hour. Who cares? We're all 100k in debt anyway. I'll toast to that. And relax, Landry. I put in quite a few orders before the buzzer. And here they come now. A waitress arrives with a huge tray of shots filled to the brim. Did somebody order tequila? You want to start with tequila? Start, finish, and everything in between. I mean, it's, it's been a long day, so yeah. Everyone takes a shot glass and raises it in the air. To the end of our first 14-hour shift and 10 hours off the clock. Cheers. Clink your glasses together, throw back the shot. Oh, wow. Well, that's one way to wake me up. Again. Do, do we have any limes or salt? Dr. Oblandry, lime and salt are for wimps. I'll raise another toast. How about two new friends? Hey, two new friends. You bump your knuckles against Elijah's as you clink your shot glasses together. How does it taste nastier the second time around? Casey, your turn. An amazing career, making the world a better place. It's happy as hell, Casey. That's my kind of toast. Yes, you guys are officially my day ones. You all bump your glasses clumsily together, laughing as Landry misses completely. Alright, this badger needs to dance. And this human needs to switch to water for a while so he, he doesn't puke in a potted plant. You're all complete whims, and I'm ashamed to be seen with you. You and Sienna get up to let Jackie out of the booth. As Elijah hijacks the jukebox to put on some Michael Jackson, you notice Landry staring at the bar, you follow his gaze to a pretty girl. She's cute. Go talk to her. I, I don't really do that. I'm not good at flirting. Me neither, actually. I'm gonna be honest. And it's especially hard because for some reason everyone at this hospital is incredibly good-looking. 
Seriously, what the heck? Hey, maybe it's a good thing we're terrible foreigners. It'll let us focus on our jobs. There's a silver lining to everything. Suddenly, you feel a sharp pain in your ribs as a sneering frat guy forces his way toward the bar. Hey, you just ran over my friend! So? So apologize, or were you raised somewhere they don't teach manners? Like a barn. <sighs> Dude, she's about to kick your ass. <sighs> yeah, right. He looks down at Sienna, whose eyes are on fire. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Casey. Apology accepted. You know, amused or amazed. And the guy walks away sullen. I'm both. Wow, Sienna. I'm impressed. I just can't handle inconsiderate people. It's so unnecessary, you know? Elijah cues up a Marvin Gaye slow jam on the jukebox. Now we're talking. To everyone in the bar, you're welcome! Come on, Casey. You do know how to dance, don't you? Small Jackie, uh, about to answer when you hear Bryce calling to you from a crew of rowdy surgical interns. Hey, Casey, get over here. I've got a game for you. He also have a trio of darts. And at the bar, you notice Dr. Ramsey drinking peacefully alone. He looks up, meeting your eye. I'm gonna guess they're all diamond choices. Oh, come on! How about this? Can I go home? Can I, can I go home? Is that a choice? Not a choice. Alright, fine. Actually, I think I'm gonna sit this one out. Your laws! You head back to the booth and take a seat across from Landry. He's still looking at the pretty girl now on the dance floor. How's that long game working out for you? Great. I think she glanced at me. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> okay. That's just mean. That is mean. Much, much later. You yawn, propping your head up on the booth table with your hand. What time is it? Late. Jackie comes over with a tray full of glasses. One for the road? You cannot be serious. I'm not dummy, it's water. Don't ha wanna have to cover for you hungover asses tomorrow. Jackie passes out the water. I would have rather taken some coffee. You guys might not realize it, but you all have really helped me survive today. I'm so grateful to have met you all. Here, here. And now we know who the sappy drunker, drunk of the group is. You can thank me by teaching Ramsey my name. Yeah, good luck with that, dude. You clink your glasses together one last time and drink the water. You step outside, the chilly air hitting you like a wall, instantly sobering you up. You look back at the hospital, looming over the dark street. I can't believe we have to be back here in just a few hours. I'm staying with my boyfriend, but he lives so far across town, I'll be lucky if I get two hours of sleep. I'd love two hours. The apartment I'm renting is above an all-night salsa club. My place sucks, too. The elevator looks a century old. It's gonna give out and drop me to my death. But I guess I should be glad I'm not living at the Durleys, huh, Casey? I'd kill for a closet at this point. I've got a bed in the hostel. And a couple in the bunk above me really, really like sex. Hey guys, maybe I'm just saying this because I'm drunk, but what if we got a place together? What? The five of us interns? Sure. I know rent in Boston is expensive, but one big place split between the five of us probably isn't much more than what we're paying now for our individual hellholes. Sienna, that's a kick-ass idea. That would be a 24 study fest party Netflix binge. I mean, are you still watching? 
Hell yes, I'm still watching. Can any of us afford an account? Shh, that's why we take turns doing a free account. <laughs> I have the system unlocked. I've got my sister's password. Then it's settled. We'll start looking tomorrow. To Craigslist. Remember when Craigslist was used for dating? Me too. Pepperidge Farms also remembers. A warm feeling settles in your chest as you say goodbye to your new friends. You head towards the tea station with Sienna, glancing back at the towering hospital as you walk away. What you thinking about, Doctor? The next three years of our lives here. So much is going to change and happen. Yeah, it will. But we'll take it one day at a time. Together. Your first day is in the books. But your career is just getting started. Can you survive your intern year? Keep playing to find out. Can you survive your intern year? So, uh, I kind of get the feeling of freshman vibe going on. Um, it seems like we pretty much have one specific intern for each of the freshmen. I kind of like the feeling of this. Um, chapter 2 was a bit short and sweet, but I suppose that's Pixelberry's. Typical standard, brand new book, short chapter two, uh, especially when they release two chapters neck and neck with one another. Um, with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Um, sorry I'm a little distant. Um, just someone said something to me before the start of the book, and I kind of just kind of zoned out. So mentally I'm here, mentally I'm there, mentally I'm everywhere! Um, and then also I didn't sleep very well um, pretty much yesterday. I got a root canal, yay. Um... And um, I never do really good with the whole teeth experience thing. And then they're like, hey, you want some Tylenol 3? And it's like, oh, great, because that'll really help. Um, so with that being said, um, that and I worked on a project this morning. If you haven't seen it, it's up on the channel. There's a second one I'm kind of just kind of sitting on, um, just seeing how the first project goes. Um, so, hey, feel free to check that out. It's over on the channel. Um, it's just covering a lot of bases. Um, if you're someone who is open-minded at all and sees a lot of today's issues, um, let alone some of the issues in, um, you know, important issues, you'll actually watch the video and you'll actually learn quite a few things, and maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you won't. Um, you know, constructive criticism and even a civil disagreement happen, um, and I think that's what this community is all about, is being civil and being awesome to one another. And, hey, if you want that too, feel free to share it. Um, because I want to continue growing our awesome community and being awesome together. And I want this to be a lasting, impactful thing together. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.